Hello, my name is Stefan Kraus from Byte the Bytes, and in this tutorial video I'm going to show you how to use the object placement capabilities of Word Creator. So we're going to place some nice trees and some grass and some, some stones and all such things that are necessary to create some realistic landscape. Okay, as you can see that um, I already have created a nice terrain, it's already texturized. So it's actually almost the same that we did in the texturing demo, but I just adjusted it a little bit more by adding a few more textures and making it uh, making it a little bit more nice. So, okay, now to place objects, it's quite easy to do. I'll switch over to the objects tab now, and there you have these options like the trees and details and detail meshes and the meshes. So we're going to start with trees, and in this case, I'm I really love the trees from Speed Tree. So that's why I'm going to use the speed tree trees now. Uh, here we go. I'm going to use the uh, desktop tree package, which is really awesome. It's a really large package containing all the trees that you actually would require. And I'm going to select the Alaska Cheddar here. So all you got to do is um, just drag and drop a tree into this field here. So actually, this works with uh, with our speed tree or the standard Unity trees. You can use any Unity tree package. That you can find on the asset store. Now we have applied that tree here. I'm going to visualize the heat maps to see where this tree is going to be applied. You can see here cur currently all over the entire map. I'm going to do this for now so you can see what is going to happen now. Hit the generate button and here we go. Now it's over the entire terrain. That that actually doesn't look really cool so um, I'm going to change a few things. Um, we're going to first uh, reduce a little bit the size. Something that looks, or that's something uh, that fits better to this terrain size here, like maybe this. And we're going to distribute this uh, tree only uh, along a specific texture. So I'm going to explain all these things very soon. I just want to show you a few things first. So we're going to distribute this tree only at this location. You can see here in the texture. Let's go on with it generate uh, terrain and here we go. You can see we have placed our trees over this uh, only along this texture here and now let's let's see what kind of settings we have here. So first of all the tree here it is if you want to change the tree you can do it uh, at any time by placing drag and drop this tree into this field here so it's the same behavior than with the textures can change of course the color, you can change the color range, so actually these are all those settings that you would have also inside the Unity inspector uh, when adding a tree to the Unity tree, uh, to, to the Unity terrain object. Um, something that only works with a speed tree is uh, the random rotation, so it doesn't work currently with the Unity trees, that seems to be a bug inside Unity. Um, you can adjust the rotation range, uh, the bounding radius can be set up so that trees don't get stuck into each other. Uh, then the most important part is uh, or are the distribution settings actually. So you can distribute a tree along a texture for example. If I'm going to visualize heat maps you can see that. You can put it all where the snow texture is only or this one here. So These could be all those distribution uh, types. I've selected this texture and all the other things you can see here are equal to the uh, texturing uh, settings that you could uh, that we already discussed in the uh, texturing uh, tutorial. So you can, for example, select a dynamic mask, put it along with it, and so on. So this is something uh, which is not new to you. You could also select the color map. You can select the terrain height can be used, and so on. Same for the uh, for the for the sun direction, for the for the for the light direction, for the slope, and also for the cavity. So I'm not going to explain these things again. Uh, please check out the uh, texturing video tutorial about this because it's uh, exactly the same. So we're going to save a uh, little uh, time and uh, heading over to the occurrence. So occurrence means that. Uh, this is actually a percentage value, 100% means the entire terrain will be covered. Um, so this this could be uh, interpreted some some kind of as a tree number count, but it's a percentual uh, uh, indicator. The density uh, from reducing this value, you will see that the uh, 
the uh, density reduces. So less trees for the on the same area. If I'm increasing this, I'm having more trees within a within an area. So it's more dense. So another thing uh, I would like to show you or just to tell you is that because I'm now working on the trees, uh, I don't have to recreate the train and I also don't have to recreate the texturing each time I'm hitting the generate button. So uh, this saves a lot of time actually. So you can just uncheck these uh, values here, uh, these checkboxes to reduce generation time. Once you're done with the trees, you could also uncheck the trees, hit the generate. You will see the trees will keep as is, but they will not be regenerated and anything further will be then be recognized during the generation process. So we're not done with the trees yet. I'm going to uh, just to reduce a little bit the density of this tree here. And now I'm going to duplicate this tree and use the younger tree version of it. Drain drop. Here we go. I will leave the settings as is and hit the generate button now. So you can see now we have a few smaller trees added to this. So you can add, add as many trees as you want. Of course, the more trees you have, the longer the entire generation process takes when placing the trees. Okay, now let's head over to the uh, details. Um, details are such things as uh, grass and uh, flowers. And now for the details in this case, I'm going to use the, uh, the really awesome package. Where is it? Here we go, the textures. Uh, from Turbo Sculpeur. He has these really great assets here like uh, high quality photographic textures, grass pack volume 1 and volume 2. Uh, really great things that are included in this package here. Uh, really beautiful grass and tree, uh, flowers and so on. There's a huge collection that you can use. It's, uh, it, it just looks fantastic. So um, let's play some grass. It's actually exactly the same workflow than you would uh, have done with the trees. So you just select your grass texture, drag and drop, put it in or see where the grass would be applied. You can again set up the detail settings such as uh, you could drag and drop another texture for example or you can set it as a billboard or non-billboard. Um, you can set up the color healthy and color dry. So these are exactly the same settings you would also have uh, if you would uh, apply them in the uh, in the uh, with the Unity Terrain tools, so I'm changing a little bit the color here. Doesn't like so that's good. I'm also reducing a little bit the size, maybe something like this. And now I want to apply this only along a specific texture, like the grass, only where the grass region is. And now I'll leave this as is because it's exactly the same that we have discussed in the in the texturing uh, tutorial and I will yeah, set up the, the, the noise spread a little bit. So it, uh, the occurrence here is also meant in a percentual so it's like uh, if reducing it you have less details uh, within a specific range or in a specific area. If you're increasing it you have more details within a spe uh, specific area. So now let's generate it and see how it looks like. And now to see what's going on, we're going to fly in. Whoop, here we go. Now you can see that we have placed the grass only along the grass texture. You can see it's cut here, there's no grass because this is a different texture now. Uh, now you can see that it's not fully dense because uh, you see all these holes here. So now there are um, a, few, uh, a few things you can do if you want to make it more dense. So let me quickly lock this one here. The first one is um, you increase the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the occurrence to the maximum of one. So that's what I have done here. So the other reason why this is not the dance is because you can set up in World Creator, a tell World Creator, uh, the detail density. So if it's one already, so it's set to the maximum. You can see I'm reducing this one. You can reduce a little bit the density of the grass and the, all the details that I have, have applied over the terrain. So the other thing that now will work is only to increase the detail map resolution. This means that you have, a, 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 have more information that you can use to place details. So if I now hit generate, the generation process for, for generating the details takes a, a longer amount of time, but you can see the 
get you have more information you can use to place the details like positions and so on and the more dense it will be another good trick is but it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't save actually more time to um, keep it for example the resolution at 1k and uh, just duplicate this grass uh, actually for now it generate you'll see that density will be likely equal okay not not exactly but uh, this one here has one advantage the advantage is that you can set this to a different value for example different color values giving you more more possibilities when about making the grass more realistic so let's see how it looks like now we have as you can see now it's not so regular you have some irregulations uh, it's different in size and so on so this is more natural it looks a lot better actually so now let's um, set up some uh, flowers maybe so we're going to duplicate it again and pick some nice flowers we could use maybe this one here actually this is only grass but let's try it out how it looks like um, but we're going to reduce the occurrence in this case to a smaller value like maybe this and see how it looks like here we go bam that's it so now this is quite okay so I love that one now I wanna place also some textures maybe over here so what we're going to do is just to uh, duplicate it again or just drag and drop and set up the settings again um, duplicating it and now this texture equals to that one so I'm going to select that one here and um, let's see how it looks like if I hit the generate button so we have some grass also over the other side here we go now it looks very cool with the grass actually with the with the colors so it can make it a little bit more darker to uh, indicate that this is different because there are trees and the sun is not getting into these locations so maybe the grass could look a little bit more dry and so on so this is how it would look like now we could further extend by duplicating it again and adding some some uh, different other <coughs> kind of grass like maybe something which looks more dry something like that so just just give it a try and see how it looks like maybe it will not fit perfectly but I think you will get the idea behind all that so it generate here we go so okay it doesn't look really cool could have done a bit better but I think you get the idea behind all that so this is how now my terrain looks like you see texturing and the grass placement are really really beautiful really pretty nice here we go with these like that really cool it works perfect okay now let's say I want to put some stones making the scenery a little bit more interesting uh, very easy to do uh, head over to the meshes now and I got some really nice stones also from the photorealistic stones package here um, actually some of these stones all, um, also ship with word creator so check the uh, check the assets folder inside word creator same for the texture that I have used uh, I think about five or six textures are also shipped with the word creator asset from Turbo Sculper. you can use freely so now adding some stones it's exactly the same behavior again select the stone drag and drop it into here uh, I enable the visualize heat maps um, you have exactly the same settings that you would have with the other one cavity follow sun the terrain height and so on so I'm going to use the texture again like that and uh, now we can um, here increase the occurrence uh, make sure not to increase it to a value something like that else you will have tons of meshes on your terrain this will reduce your performance drastically so uh, start with values like maybe like seven so actually this depends on how large your terrain is I mean you have a quite a smaller area of a of a, of a terrain mesh so uh, small area means please use uh, lower occurrence values also so let's see how it looks like let's I'm generating some stones you can see I could have 
can disable those texturing and trees details here. Doing this now. <coughs> and you already can see that there are some stones placed. All these small little green points here are the colliders of those stones indicating there is something. So let's fly in and see how it looks like. Here we go. Pretty cool. So we can work with that. So that's that's really easy to play stones and uh, you can put in any kind of uh, other asset that you want. Um, it's not limited because uh, this is a simple mesh that you can put in any kind of game object that you have as a prefab or as a game object in here in, the, uh, in your hierarchy. Now the detail meshes, actually I don't really use them. Um, they are exactly equal uh, uh, handle than the uh, than the details. There are just a few things that you have to consider if you're using uh, meshes uh, for, for for placing as details. That is uh, already mentioned here as a warning. Uh, the detail meshes do not have colliders or lot groups applied, else they will not be recognized and drawn by the Unity train object. So, I don't know if this is an issue inside Unity or not. Um, probably not. Uh, so. Actually, if you really want some really great details and use, please, uh, the meshes instead. Um, anything else is just like, you just drop and dra uh, dra drag and drop a mesh inside here. So this will not work because this one has a collider object. So um, but you can set up the, the same things that you would have done with the, with the simple grass details. So I'm going to remove it now. Uh, regarding the meshes, uh, you have uh, the, the typical settings such as uh, uh, copy source layer, which is uh, quite interesting, because if you if if you check this one and you have applied a layer to this object here, like uh, like whatever I don't know, water or maybe a stones layer or something like that, then the meshes that are being generated and placed over this over the terrain, which I just placed as as game objects in this terrain, uh, will uh, will uh, will uh, contain the uh, the layer that the prefab has. Um, now lock height to width, okay, this is self-explaining. Height offset can be sometimes very useful. Let me explain it quickly. If I move in and watching this stone here, for example, sometimes you have some, some objects which are, which pivot is not the center of the object, but uh, at a different location. So you could use the height offset to, to uh, manipulate this. You can see that now those meshes are somewhere above the ground or more above the ground I'm going to get more larger like this see that this mesh location has not an offset to the ground sometimes it's quite useful because some prefabs or some designers of those assets did not uh, take this into account so the rotation uh, X Y and Z um, yeah you can these these can be used to uh, to rotate a mesh along uh, within a specific range of uh, within a specific range, um, so this gives you different results for each of these, making make uh, making it more natural in the placing. You can see already here, they are oriented differently. Um, align with terrain means if you check this one here, which is quite important, is that every time you uh, you create the terrain with a different seed, those meshes will be applied to this terrain, so they're not get stuck somewhere on the old terrain mesh but uh, uh, with each new generation tab, they will align with the new terrain. The bounding radius, again, can be used to uh, prevent uh, mesh intersection, which is quite important. This also will affect the, uh, the uh, tree settings. Okay, so um, that's for it now with the, with the objects. Uh, as you see, uh, it's quite uh, straightforward uh, and easy to use. So. Thanks for watching and please check out our other tutorial videos on our website and on our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you, bye-bye. Uh,